welcome to Vegas Valley Water, a brand new show to tell you all about our water system, where we get it, how it's treated and delivered safely, efficiently and consistently, plus all the people at the Las Vegas Valley Water District that deliver it to you. I'm John Castanino, excited to take you on a water journey for the next 30 minutes, and I want to start our premiere episode here. We're at the River Mountains Water Treatment Facility in Henderson, one of two treatment facilities in Southern Nevada. Now this one treats 300 million gallons of water per day, and where we're standing is what's called the splitter. This is the exact point where water from Lake Mead enters the facility to be treated and delivered to your home safely. We'll tell you a lot more about this critical and really fascinating piece of infrastructure throughout the course of the show, including one distinction that makes it one of the top facilities in the country. First, let's discuss this. You may have recently received the 2020 water quality report in the mail. We hope you took a look at it. If not, here's what it's all about. You receive a water quality report so you know each year what's in your drinking water and that our water meets or surpasses all of the standards contained in the Safe Drinking Water Act. The federal government created the law to protect the public's drinking water supply. We're committed to providing high quality water to Southern Nevada residents. Let's be clear about your water quality. Southern Nevada's drinking water meets or surpasses all state and federal safe drinking water standards. One of the questions that we are constantly asked is, what's the difference between the Southern Nevada Water Authority and the Las Vegas Valley Water District? And how do agencies like the city of Henderson, North Las Vegas, and Boulder City fit? Well, I'm glad you asked. Overall, the Southern Nevada Water Authority is responsible for managing our community's total water resources and handling all of the water supply planning for our community. SNWA builds, operates, and overall maintains regional water infrastructure, like water treatment facilities. And the Southern Nevada Water Authority is also responsible for ensuring water quality compliance so that all of the water that gets delivered to your home meets or surpasses drinking water standards. And SNWA also implements our community's progressive and comprehensive water conservation programs. The Las Vegas Valley Water District, much like the city of Henderson, North Las Vegas, and Boulder City, delivers the water that it receives from the Southern Nevada Water Authority to hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses throughout our community. The Las Vegas Valley Water District provides water primarily within the city of Las Vegas and unincorporated Clark County. The Las Vegas Valley Water District is responsible for reliable water delivery to more than 1.5 million people. It also manages more than 6,500 miles of underground pipelines, and reservoirs and pumping stations that dot our community throughout the valley. The Las Vegas Valley Water District also handles utility billing services and providing exceptional customer services to everybody that receives water from it. And lastly, the Las Vegas Valley Water District ensures compliance with water waste and the water waste rules established under the Las Vegas Valley Water District service rules. So while it may seem a little confusing as to which water or wastewater agency does what, the thing to remember is that the Southern Nevada Water Authority and the coordinated efforts of its seven member agencies help ensure reliable water gets delivered to every tap throughout our community. So use it responsibly.
When explaining the journey of our water from the lake to your tap, one critical step is this room that we're inside here at the River Mountains Water Treatment Facility. This is the ozonation room. Now, ozone is one of the most effective and safest ways to clean and disinfect our water supply. Traditionally, ozone is naturally created by lightning striking in the atmosphere. To make it for our purposes, we call this room lightning in a bottle. The technology in here creates the 95% pure oxygen gas that is injected and churns in the water to clean it. The gas eventually dissipates, and by the time water leaves this facility, all traces of it are gone. The Las Vegas Valley Water District was one of the first water utilities in the nation to adopt this technology that has since become standard practice for agencies across the nation. We were also one of the first to make a major breakthrough in ensuring a safe water supply in the age of the coronavirus. River Mountains has been able to detect remnants of the virus in our wastewater. That's, of course, the water coming in from our sewage system. Here's Diana Diaz to tell us more. During the coronavirus pandemic, testing in humans has been a complicated matter. What may come as a surprise is that testing in wastewater has been consistent and very valuable to communities around the world. Groundbreaking research in that space has taken place here at the River Mountains Water Treatment Facility, where our scientists have been at the forefront of protecting our water supply, both here and around the world. Public safety has always been the Las Vegas Valley Water District's greatest priority. Ensuring safe water is delivered to your tap. We analyze water samples more than 300,000 times each year but also dedicate a large number of resources to what has yet to be discovered. The Research and Development Division has been in existence for approximately 20 years. And what we try to do in that division is stay ahead of the curve in terms of new contaminants and new issues in the field. Over the last two years, scientists from our partner agency, the Southern Nevada Water Authority, have emphasized R&D in microbiology. That research produced results during the start of the pandemic, detecting the genetic trace signature of COVID-19 in wastewater almost immediately. We actually found it on the exact same day that the first two cases were confirmed here in Southern Nevada. So it's a great early warning signal for that, that genetic signal of the virus in the community and, and an indi indication that COVID-19 is in that community. Now let's be clear, it's wastewater coming in that shows trace signatures of the virus but that material is removed or killed in the wastewater treatment process, ensuring that our drinking water supply is safe. We do not detect it in the back end of the wastewater treatment plant. So basically we're convinced that the wastewater process by itself is eliminating that organism. We are not detecting it in our raw water and we are certainly not detecting it in our finished water. We want to make sure that we're adequately protecting public health. So by showing that that signal gets knocked out early in the wastewater treatment plant, even before it impacts our drinking water source, that's a great indication that this is not a risk uh, on the drinking water side. So in terms of the transmission of the COVID by a water route, it's not there. What is there, however, is progress in the area of wastewater epidemiology, using water to track the prevalence of an outbreak in a community. The SNWA has shared its information to assist the water industry and public health organizations around the world. SNWA scientist Dan Garrity even participating in a briefing before congressional staff. So it's another piece of that puzzle to try to figure out uh, what's happening and what's the best approach to try to mitigate the impacts of that disease in the community. Going forward, as the disease starts to drop in our community, that genetic signal will start to drop in the wastewater as well. If the signal increases, that will provide an early warning to the community that cases are on the rise. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm an electrical engineer with the Las Vegas Valley Water District, and this is how I make your water work for you. They say you're never supposed to combine water and electricity, but actually these two things go hand in hand where my job is concerned. You see, without electricity, water can't be delivered to our customers. 24 hours a day, every day, our water system is delivering water to homes and businesses across 300 square miles in Southern Nevada. It takes a lot of power to move this much water. In fact, the water district has over 125,000 horsepower of electric motors to move water around the valley. And we're one of NV Energy's largest customers. 
I work daily to ensure power is available to operate the district's electrical distribution system so you can count on water being available at your tap when you need it. And just as I'm constantly looking out for our customers, I'm also working to ensure fellow employees are safe from electrical hazards. I have a deep understanding of our electrical distribution system and equipment and work to verify its safety and reliability. It's important to us to be at the forefront of our industry. I'm a licensed professional electrical engineer and maintain water operator certifications from the Nevada Division of Environmental Protection. Being an active part of this field ensures the Water District has one of the most efficient, reliable, and well-maintained systems. Thank you for letting me show you how the Water District's maintenance engineering team works for you. For obvious reasons, pipes are a critical piece of infrastructure to deliver high-quality water to our community. In fact, there are 6,000 miles of pipe the Las Vegas Valley Water District is responsible for in Southern Nevada. And we don't wait until something goes wrong before we spring into action. We protect the pipes proactively using technology to make sure service interruptions are prevented. Of the 6,000 miles of pipeline the Las Vegas Valley Water District maintains in Southern Nevada, about 3,000 miles, or half of the distribution system, was built after 1990. It's a relatively young system compared to other major metropolitan areas. That doesn't mean we don't have to be proactive in trying to do a renewal and replacement program. So we work as part of our asset management program and planning program. And in 2017, we developed this uh, scoring system where we went for every pipe segment in the distribution system. We created a score, risk score, for each of those pipelines based on uh, likelihood of failure and consequence of failure. You can never predict when a pipeline will, will fail, but there's some indicators, uh, not just age, because the age of a pipeline is not a, a great indicator of uh, when a pipeline will break. There's a lot that goes into assessing each and every pipe to produce a risk score in our proprietary software. Is the pipe located near a school, hospital, or the resort corridor? Even the surrounding soil can play a role in the life of a pipeline. We were pleased to discover that only 8.6 miles fell into the high or extreme risk categories, a very small amount overall. Approximately 20 infrastructure projects were initialized based on these risk scores. And once the pipelines are dug up, we receive confirmation the scoring system works. What they had predicted has been really close to what's been found in the field. So we're very confident with uh, what the results have been over time and uh, we're happy with uh, the process as it's going and moving forward. One thing software can't do, however, is coordinate with other agencies. The Water District regularly meets with city and county officials to harmonize projects like this one on Las Vegas Boulevard. The result will be repaved roads, new sidewalks, and updates to pipelines to create long-term water reliability for the resort corridor, while minimizing the future disruption to residents and visitors. We try to coordinate with it and be there at the same time so we don't have to come back after a street has been paved and dig it up again to install uh, replaced pipelines. So it takes a combined effort with technology and coordination when it comes to proactively protecting the pipes to provide a maximum benefit for everyone in the community. Our job is to, to try to make the best decision, minimize the impact, minimize the disruption, and, and make really good decisions in terms of pipeline replacement. And the other thing is, by doing that, we won't have 10, 20, 30 years down the road, a, a huge backlog of repair and replacement, all the pipelines failing at the same time. By doing an upkeep, we actually have a very small slope to climb where we're replacing it as we go and the system remains as new as possible. Interestingly, there are pipelines in our system that are more than 100 years old that are still extremely safe and reliable today. It was during World War II when more steel was needed for the war effort, so pipelines were built thinner. Regardless of age, however, we stay on top of the need to replace pipelines across the valley. That investment has contributed to making our water system among the most reliable in the country.
All right, now we're joined by Bob Devaney. Bob is a treatment superintendent, and he knows everything there is to know about this River Mountains treatment facility. You've been with the district uh, for 15 years now. So let's start with this place and give us some of the facts and maybe some of the points that stand out that make this facility elite. Right, so the River Mountains treatment facility came online and started producing water in 2002. It was required due to the vast and uh, growing economy that we had here in Las Vegas to keep up with demands and revive reliably provide water to the community. The plant was designed and built at about 300 million gallons per day, although we can deliver more than that now. Uh, we use sodium hypochlorite and ozone for disinfection of the water. We generate ozone here on site, and even though ozone's somewhat more common now, when the facility was built, it was considered one of the most cutting edge and actually largest facilities in the country. Ozone has a lot of beneficial qualities. Not only is it a very good disinfectant, it removes all kinds of pathogens and bad bacteria out of the water, but it also has other attributes such as it typically improves the taste and water of the final finished product. Um, it breaks down natural organic molecules in the water, large natural organic molecules in the water, and that allows us to treat the water more easily by adding fewer chemicals, less chemicals to the process. Yeah, and where we're standing is the final step in the process, and that's the filters. 20 filters here, all the water runs through these filters, and I know that we've constructed this area of the treatment facility where, again, the filters are really another standout aspect of it. Yeah, so we have 20 filters. Um, each can produce about 20 million gallons per day of water. They contain about five feet of anthracite coal as a filter media, and in the filtration process, we remove all of the remaining dust and particles and anything that remains in the water, possibly bacteria that were still remain in the water, bacteria that are resistant to the disinfection process. But all that, those particles build up on the filters and the filters have to be cleaned at some point. So we backwash the filters. We backwash these filters about on average once a week, each, each filter once a week. That's pretty long based on most industry standards. And we can do that mostly because of the high quality source water, but also because of the benefits of ozonation and the minimal amount of chemicals that we add into the process because those chemicals typically would have to be filtered out at the end of the process, and by reducing that amount, we, we lengthen the filter run times. Right, and obviously all this leads to what we all have to meet, and that's the federal water quality standards. There is a number that is put out by the federal government, but uh, across the board, this facility and all the water that comes through uh, southern Nevada is treated, and it really beats, uh, exceeds, far exceeds federal standards. Right? Yeah, we, we exceed all federal standards. The main one is turbidity. The federal government requires a maximum of 0.3 turbidity units, and typically the water produced here is about 0.03, so that is 10 times better than the federal government requires. Yeah, and you combine all that, and then you win a major award, which I want to talk about now, and I'm going to read it so I make sure I say it correctly. It's safe. Water's Excellence in Water Treatment Award. We got this award in 2018. Only 14 facilities or districts across the country have gotten that award, and we've got one of them. Explain that for us. Yes, the partnership is, works in collaboration with the American Water Works Association, and it allows facilities the opportunity to optimize their treatment process. We do that through a series of data analysis and then identification of possible areas for improvement and implementation of those. It's an ongoing process, um, but we're really happy to have received that reward. Yeah, again, elite is the word that comes to mind. My final question for you, uh, again, I'm sure something else that fits into the elite status of this facility is sustainability. It's part of our core mission at the district. Tell us how this facility fits into that. Yeah, so as, as part of the company's mission and values of sustainability, uh, we focus here at the treatment plant largely on chemical reduction, chemical usage reduction, and um, power consumption. Power is also one of our biggest expenses, and so we have proactively installed renewable energy facilities throughout the valley in the form of solar panels, and one of the largest solar facilities that we own is actually on site here at the River Mountains Treatment Plant. Bob, thank you for coming on. Appreciate that and all the information that you gave us. We're actually going to go to a, a story now talking about another major solar project that the Las Vegas Valley Water District recently completed. Sustainability is one of the hallmarks of our organization. Hi, I'm Gary Wood, Renewable Energy Program Manager for the Las Vegas Valley Water District. And today I'm here to introduce our latest installation of solar energy. It's uh, solar covered carports, which is one of the largest in the nation and is the largest in the state of Nevada. 
it's approximately about four acres of uh, parking area that we've covered with solar panels. This installation is one of three on the Las Vegas Valley Water District campus. In total, they amount to a two megawatts of capacity. Two megawatts equates to 2.4 million kilowatt hours per year. That is enough to power about 350 medium-sized homes in Las Vegas. In 2019, the Nevada State Legislature amended its Renewable Energy Portfolio Standard for the affected utilities. The district is one of those utilities that came under the mandate after this legislation. As a result, we have to have 50% uh, of our power derived from renewable resources by the year 2030. We are well on our way to meeting the mandate. With this project and projects that we've done in the past, added to a project that we're currently negotiating, which we expect to be around in 2023, we're gonna be surpassed the requirement of 50%. And uh, we are looking forward to doing uh, additional projects in the future that'll take us even further beyond that. This pile of wood may not look important, but we're gonna talk about how important it is in today's Vegas Valley water history. We're at the site of Big Spring, which is one of the earliest spots in Las Vegas where water came out of the ground, flowing into creeks and drainages around the Las Vegas Valley. Big Spring is important for a lot of reasons, but mostly because this is sort of the source of life for the Las Vegas Valley. For generations, Southern Paiute people lived along the drainages and banks of the creeks in Las Vegas and moved from spring to spring, raising families. Early settlers came through and explorers John C. Fremont put Las Vegas in the map in the 1840s. Members of the Latter-day Saints came here and built a Mormon mission, the Mormon Fort down in Las Vegas. A million and a half gallons of water flowed out of these springs into the creeks that sustained the Las Vegas Valley and the generations of people that came after it. It was always the goal of the Las Vegas Land and Water Company to improve the water resources here. And they did this by protecting the springs, uh, by putting uh, constructions over the top of it, putting concrete around the sides to help build it up, and then a roof on top to help protect that water. What we see here is what's left of the big spring house that was built in the 19-teens and has since collapsed. Over the years, the Las Vegas Valley Water District has made massive improvements in our water infrastructure. Compare big spring to what you see in front of you here at the Charleston Heights pump station. This gives you a better understanding and a better appreciation of the amount of work it takes to move water across modern Las Vegas Valley. We're excited to show you more here in Vegas Valley Water History. I know I can speak for a lot of us when I say we are very thankful that the hot summer months in Southern Nevada are behind us for the most part. Unfortunately, in September, we set a record we didn't want to, the longest recorded streak without measurable rainfall. The streak hit 150 days in 1959, and we've managed to surpass that here in 2020. It's a reminder that conservation is extremely important in our continued drought conditions. Did you know 60% of our water usage actually comes from outdoor use? It is true, and that's why following mandatory watering restrictions for your landscaping is how you can do your part to conserve. Set your watering clock to three days a week through October 31st, and then starting November 1st, make sure you change your clocks to one day a week. Visit lvbwd.com to learn your assigned watering days. Summertime is also when River Mountains and all of our facilities are pumping out the largest amount of water during the year. More water flowing means residential leaks tend to spring up. This is what our crews do to spot them and repair them. Hi, my name is Bob Cha. I'm one of the distribution crew leaders on a daytime shift in the summer. I started my water district, water district career here in the field and I've been doing this going on 17 years. We have a lot of work going on our plate during the summer months with just service line leaks, main breaks, and other various contractor issues. Right now what we're doing here is we're going ahead and replacing a three-quarter inch poly service that was notified by a contractor working in the area that there's a possible leak there. Our crews came out, checked it, determined it was our leak, and we got everything ready by marking out line locations, and we were sent out to do the leak. But we generally rely on the public. If you see water coming up and it's in the street, sidewalk, you know, we ask you to call in. It takes no time for us to come out and do a quick check to determine what it is. 
And also, it's also a possibility that it could be a leak on your service that you would want to get taken care of as fast as possible because water costs money. This is my crew working over here. We're getting the asphalt pulled off and we're going to be putting in two new copper services to replace the two polys. We went ahead, dug down, and down in here we located both service lines that we were going to be replacing. It's still muddy in there, but as you can see, where we cut the lines, verify they're off at the corporation stop. It's minor, but it's like anything else. It's uh, part of our duties that we take care of, and it's uh, every day, 24-7, seven days a week. And the general public is really accepting of this, that, you know, some people come out, they'll just ask, but generally, once we notify them that the water is going to be off for roughly a two or three hour period, they're pretty understanding. But we try to do the job basically as fast, as safe, and as convenient as possible for us and the customer. I like the outside world. Summer is hot. It's a couple of months, but you put up with it. The falls are beautiful. But I've always enjoyed working outside. It's just given me a lot of satisfaction, you know, that I go ahead, I try to do the best job that I can, I try to keep our customers happy, the district happy, and do the best job that I possibly can. Water District customers may have some questions about their bills during these challenging times. We're here for you. Let's discuss some of these options in your frequently asked questions. I'm Mike Bailey, Customer Care and Field Services Manager here at the Las Vegas Valley Water District. We currently have over 81 agents working both remote and here on site to serve our customers' needs. Whether it be questions about your bills or ways that you can make payments, we're here to answer those questions. Many of you might be wondering, what are we doing during this time to accommodate our customers that might be facing some challenging situations when it comes to their bill? Our agents are waiting for your call to set up various types of payment arrangements to help our customers through these difficult times. You may have heard recently about shutoffs in the news. Let me give you a little bit of information on that. The Water District performs less than 1% shutoffs annually for our customers, and those are only in the most extreme circumstances. We're very proactive in reaching out to our customers through multiple means, whether it be through the mail, our agents reaching out to you as a customer, or through your bill. We're making every effort to keep that water flowing. We encourage you to make a payment online, you can give us a call, or you can visit our campus and use one of our kiosks that average less than 30 seconds per transaction. Bottom line is we're here for you. We wanna make sure we keep the water flowing and we are willing to work with our customers to meet their needs. That wraps up the debut episode of Vegas Valley Water. We wanna thank you for watching and learning a little more about our organization and the River Mountains Water Treatment Facility. Thanks for being water smart. Oh, 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 oh,